what's <clears throat> what's up tribe my apologies for the time confusion um i thought i had changed the time on both channels so my apology um well we're gonna get into this um we're gonna get into this documentary that y'all wanted me to watch well i was a little curious um I was a little curious, I'm not going to lie, but I probably wasn't as curious as a lot of people were because Nickelodeon really wasn't my childhood. However, once I started watching it for obvious reasons, I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Um, Real quick announcement before we get into this. Before we get into this, don't forget tonight, at our usual time, 8.15-ish, we will be, the Whether You Like It or Not panel will be on Scotty by Nature's channel to go over the looks. The Real Housewives of Potomac reunion looks were um, released today, and y'all know what we do. Y'all know we always go live to have a live uh, roast and review of the looks. Um, so we'll be over there at 8.15-ish, probably as soon as we get done here, we will be logging in over there, Okay. All right, you guys, let's get into the things of the things of the things. This, um, my main channel is a members only chat. So if you guys want to talk freely, go over to the Really Be TV Reviews channel and you can chat freely over there. Okay. You know, we're trying to get the, get that channel monetized. So if you're not subscribed, go on over there and subscribe. You do not have to become a member over here. You could just go over to the other channel and you can chat as freely as you like. Now let's get into this, you guys. Y'all know I'm a little bit older than y'all. So Nickelodeon was not my thing. Like I I can honestly say that I did not watch not one episode of any of these shows they talked about. I mean, not one. Not one. I knew the shows, I knew of the shows, but honestly, never watched any of the shows. The closest I came, I did watch Double Dare, but Double Dare didn't use, it used to come on regular TV first. If I remember correctly, somebody, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but Double Dare used to come on the regular channel first. So, hey, you guys, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Miss Toby, didn't Double Dare used to come on like channel 20? Well, you, 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 you a little bit further out than me, but I feel like Double Dare used to come on, um, like I like channel 20. Like for all of y'all that are before that all y'all know is cable TV and y'all know what life was like before cable. Because Double Dare started. I re, I used to watch Double Dare. I was I I don't remember how old I was. So anyway, Quiet on the Set is a documentary um about life on in the Nickelodeon stadium um 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 studio under the guidance of a man by the name of dan snyder now here is where my childhood does come into play and for those of you who are of my age group my age or or older dan snyder which i did not know until today dan snyder is the same guy that used to be on the show head of the class so right it was on the local channel thank you miss toby and hey hey miss toby hey my boo so Dan, those of you who remember Head of the Class, Head of the Class had Robin Givens on there. That was when Robin Givens first became like a star. You know, she was on this hit show, Head of the Class. It was a sitcom. It was about like an advanced class with all of these geniuses um, who pretty much don't um, fit in with, with regular school because they're just so smart. And these, you know, they're these geniuses. So we had Robin Givens, Dan Snyder. Um, they had this other guy. I don't remember his name. I think that's the guy who ended up becoming his partner on um, um, all that. Um, there's the head of the class. Why are we rebooting everything? Golly. Anyway, um, the, the the teacher, oh, I can't remember his name. I think the teacher was the guy from WKRP in Cincinnati. But don't quote me on that because I could really be wrong. Um, but the teacher... 
you know, he comes in. And so anyway, it's a cute show. I mean, it is what it is. It's a sitcom from the 80s. It's a cute show. But Dan Snyder was the fat kid, right? He was the fat kid. And of course, he got all of the fat jokes. And they did Howard Hessman, right? So he was the teacher. That's the guy from WKRP in Cincinnati, right? Okay. Was Okay. Okay. So yeah. So it was a cute show. And I used to watch it. It was, it was like one of my, you know, but I was a kid. Because I know y'all think I'm old, old, but you know, I was a kid, okay? So when I first saw that, I said, oh, wow, so this guy, I do know who this guy is. So Dan Snyder left, you know, he left head of the class, and he they said he actually wrote his first script while he was still on head of the class, and he actually wrote one of the episodes, which kind of got him in the door. From there, once head of the class was canceled or whatever, from there, he was able to... Um, he, start, he was able to sell a show to Nickelodeon, all that, which is basically a Saturday Night Live for kids, by kids kind of thing. Right. Alan, Dan Schneider was Alan the Computer Geek. Right. He was the Computer Geek. Yes, yes, yes. Um. Now, they brought up this thing about him lying on his resume saying that he went to Harvard. Now, his father went to Harvard, but there's no proof that Dan Snyder ever actually went to Harvard. I don't know why that's important because it really never came back up. I guess other than to just show that he was a liar. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, we, you know, we're talking to some of the... They start off by talking to some of the... Um, some of the... Um, the kids who were on the first version of all of that. And we find out that, you know, when he was putting his show together, they were they hired two female writers. And he started, it's clear to me that this guy, Dan Schneider, it's clear to me that he was a misogynist. Um, he did not respect women. Um, it almost makes me wonder why he hired these two women. I feel like he, I feel like they made him. I feel like he was forced to hire these women to be in the writer's room. So he hired these two women to be in the writer's room. And the first thing he did was they asked them to split their salary. So instead of getting, let's just say, a beginner salary in the early 90s for a writer, let's say it was $50,000. I don't know what it was. Don't come at me in the chat. I'm just giving y'all numbers. They were told basically, well, we're hiring two writers, but we only have budget for one. So would you mind splitting the budget? Now, the one thing I don't want us to do before we get into this um, documentary, please feel free to have your opinion. I, I, I don't want nobody to feel like they can't speak freely or speak their, their opinion. But what I want us to do is I, I want us to put ourselves in these people's shoes before we start talking about what we wouldn't have done. OK, so the one lady says she was temping. The other lady says she had been um you know, this was her first opportunity to write for a television show. The same thing for the other woman. And so both of them accepted it, right? Both of them accepted it, even though they knew that they knew it was wrong. They were like, so you really going to lowball us? But again, we're, the, the, the alternative was to not take the job, right? So they took the job. And they say at first it was cool. At first it was fun. They laughed a lot. It was a good time. Things were really light and da 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 da, da. But slowly over time, Dan um, started doing things and saying things that were just very inappropriate. First, he was like, do you mind if I call you ladies, um, the girls, you know, like rather than just, you know, can I just basically can I can I address you guys as 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 a as a joint unit and just call you the girls rather than call you um call you by your first name and they said yeah like who cares like I don't care you know whatever and he was like okay great because I hate people who are uptight so I you know again this is one of those things where a lot of us and I say us because I'm sure in my in my lifetime I've done it a lot of us allow these kinds of things to happen because we don't see that it's a big deal in the moment but it ends up being like the gateway into another level of disrespect. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me be clear. I'm only reviewing the uh, Sunday night's episode, which I think they did a double episode. It was two hours long. And then we'll have to do part two um, later on this week because I only watched the first part so far. So I want to let you guys know that. We're going to stop right before they get to, I guess, Cody starts telling his story. Um, 
Okay, so I was, I was talking about the ladies. So we find out that, you know, um, so they said that he would do things like, um, you know, he would have porn playing on his computer. Um, you know, he made inappropriate jokes. Drake, I'm sorry, Drake, Drake, Drake. He would, you know, he would make inappropriate jokes, you know, and um, that kind of thing. Um, so one of the one one of the people they spoke to early on was Katrina Johnson. Katrina Johnson was sort of Amanda Bynes before Amanda Bynes, based on this documentary. Um, really, B he hired the two women writers on the Amanda Bynes spinoff show. His second show called the Amanda Bynes Show. They want they weren't uh, on all of that. I'm going by what the documentary said. The documentary said they were on all of that. Oh no, you know what? Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on. You're right. It was Amanda Bynes. I'm sorry. I apologize. It was Amanda Bynes. It was Amanda Bynes. I'm jumping ahead of myself. You know what? Let me go by my notes because I'm going ahead of myself. You're right, Jay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jay. You're right. Let me follow my notes because that's, I'm going, I'm, you're right. I'm going out of order because I'm not following my notes. Let me follow my notes. Okay. So the, the sketch show, all of that. Okay, let me follow my notes. Put a pen in the, the two women. We're going to come back to them. My bad, y'all. I'm out of order. I'm out of order. See, my brain was just... So Katrina Johnson was, a, but like I said, she was sort of the Amanda Bynes before Amanda Bynes. Um, now, she, on the first part, she never admitted to any type of inappropriate relationship or anything, but she did say that she spent a lot of time with Dan. Dan was sort of her mentor. He really, really loved her, really liked her. Um, so she was funny and talented and all of those great things. Um, he even offered her, um, they even talked to her parents about a possible spinoff at one point in time. But then she started picking up weight and then she went through puberty which we all know is the kiss of death of any child actor or actress. You hit that puberty and they just don't know what to do with you. You're in that middle phase. And she said, eventually they basically phased her out of the show. And here comes Amanda Bynes. Okay. They, um, a young man by the name of Leon, who is a black kid who was on all of that. He talked about being that a lot of his sketches involved him having to wear a leotard and how that made him very uncomfortable as a young kid that wasn't comfortable in his own skin having to walk around with a leotard on um they talked about how they would slide these very adult jokes in these very sexually fueled jokes in now let me put a pin in that and i don't want anybody to take I don't want anybody to take what I'm getting ready to say wrong. Please don't. I, I feel like a lot of times when we're talking live, you guys get what I'm saying. And somehow in the replay, stuff gets lost. And I get the craziest comments in my replay. And in my mind, I'm like, but I thought I explained myself very clearly. Which tells me that people either aren't listening to the replay all the way through or they just not listening at all. But neither here nor there. Children's television, whether it's cartoons or television shows, have always been used double. Yeah, like like Xavier said, they've all double entendres have always been used. You can look at old episodes of The Little Rascals. You can look at old episodes of Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny. Shirley, the Shirley Temples, they've always, now, of course, things got more and more risque as society became more and more um, approving of things. You know, with anything over the years, things have gotten more and more overt. But I understand what people were saying in the documentary, but I also understand, and we've said, we've had this conversation before, Tribe. I also need you guys to understand that sometimes we are looking at things with a 2024 mindset in a time that wasn't where we are today. This is pre Me Too movement. This is pre a lot of things that we that women have been able to speak out about and have come to the forefront. And so, yes, when you look back on things, 
it looks really bad. You know, you see the squirting in the face that could really mimic certain things. You They showed a clip of Ariana Grande, which I didn't even know she was on Nickelodeon. I don't know these people. Pouring water on herself in a very sexual manner. Like, there are things that, yes, looking back on it now, you will be like, oh, that was nasty. But it's happened. I mean, Rocky and Bullwinkle... Bugs Bunny, like if you go back and you look at things with a, with an adult mind, knowing what you know, it was always there. It was always there. But again, I'm not I'm not excusing any of it. I'm just saying I think that I think y'all get what I'm saying. Okay, so moving on. Um They said that once Amanda came on the show, um, she was clearly Dan's favorite. And they said that, you know, of course, they had to go to class on set. That's the law. But they said that Amanda was oftentimes missing. And a lot of times she was missing. She was with Dan. Now, again, in part one, nobody accused Dan of touching nobody, doing anything appropriate in part one. I don't know what happened in part two. I ain't there yet. But in part one, nobody did that. Okay. But they did. I feel like they were alluding to some inappropriate behavior, maybe not crossing that line, right? Because they were saying how she spent a lot of time in his office and she was allowed to miss school. When the rest of the kids had to go to the tutor, she was nowhere to be found. They said her father was, around, they said her parents were on set a lot and that her father was close to Dan. And again, a lot of other people felt like that relationship may have been um, not inappropriate, like sexually, but inappropriate, like, she got favors and she was the favorite because dad had such a close relationship with them. Okay. Um, then next thing you know, so Amanda was hired on all that. Then the next thing you know, the Amanda Bond show comes across and that is where the women come in. So my apologies again, Jay, thank you. Thank you. That's why I got, I got to just follow my nose. One of the women described working for Dan. I I wrote this quote down. It says, she said, Working for Dan was like being in an abusive relationship. Okay. That's what she said. Okay. Two women shared a salary. Dan didn't think women could be funny. Oh, Dan told him that he didn't think women were funny. He said that to their face. I don't think that women are funny. I don't think that women could write funny jokes. Right. So they already knew how he felt about them. It was very clear. Um, they said one of one of the characters he came up with was a, a, a character by the name of Penelope Taint. Taint, Penelope Taint. Now I did not know this. Taint is the is the stretch of skin between your anus and your private area. I never knew that. See, I'm learning too. And of course, when the network asked them about it, they were like, "Oh no." We're talking about you're tainted. You're just tainted. We're not talking about that. I did not know. Then we we met um, a young lady by the name. Yeah, Marnie, I learned something new, baby. I learned something new. I, <laughs> I remember watching all that as a kid and the stuff went over my head. I didn't even notice the skit where the boy had the private parts all over his leotard. Right, right, right. You know, my mom didn't like me and my sister watching Amanda Bond show. She said that the kids were doing was not appropriate. See, because your mother saw it from an adult um, perspective. Your mother saw it from that adult. Okay, my doctor has stepped into the room, per perianal. Mm, I don't know. So Raquel is a black girl on the show, and she said that um, she was on the first season of the Amanda Bynes show, and she said that the blacks, um, that she was clearly treated differently, um, and she said she felt it, and she knew. They said that parents were scared to speak up because they didn't want to jeopardize their their kids' jobs, um, and that was coming from whether it was the you know, the black kids' parents or just the other parents who felt like they said they were often asked to, to work later, violating child labor laws. And things of that nature. They said Dan, again, I told you guys about him watching the porn. Also, he would ask for massages. And that's something, hey, what's up? Um, what's up, peace? That was something that was throughout that they said that, you know, he would always just be asked, getting just 
just randomly getting massages on the set. And they were talking about how inappropriate that was for obvious reasons. Like, hello, like you just sitting around and somebody, you got somebody just massaging you. Like, that's not. Again, things that we would probably look at our boss today. If our boss asked us to give him a massage, we'd be like, HR. <laughs> HR is calling. Um, they told the story. The two women told the story about one time they were in the writer's room and um, one of the women was telling a story about high school. And Dan was like, you know what would be funny? It would be funny if you told that um, if you told that story while you were bending over the desk pretending to get sodomized. How was that ever considered funny? And she said, you know, she tried to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? She tried to be like, no, no. We, huh, like tried to laugh it off. And Dan was like, no, but seriously do it. Yeah, that would be funny. Like, do it. And you're in, again, this is your boss. And the, here's the point where you, where either you're going to quit. At this point, you know that he's serious. So now you put yourself in a position where it's like, okay, this is the day I quit my job. or I just got to go ahead and eat this. And of course she did it. And again, I'm not, that's with no judgment. That, right. I don't know what's funny about sodomy, period. Much less, <sighs> I don't know why telling a story about me being in high school would even make you think of sodomy, but okay. Um, so somewhere down the line, I think her name was Kathy, because I forget, I think, I forgot, I didn't write their two names down. But Kathy, I believe, was the one who was told, she, you know, kind of heard, you know, you're just talking to people, and she found out that that what he was making them do was illegal. Like you, you can't make people split a salary. Like that's illegal to do that. And so she said she called the writers guild to confirm it. Like, wait a minute, they can't make us do this. And he was like, no, uh, the, you know, the people in the writers guild was like, no, you can't, they can't make you do that. And so they, um, the writer's girl reached out to Nickelodeon and was like, yeah, no, you got to pay those women their money. Like you have to give them their full salary. You can't make them split the salary. And she said, Dan called her and basically was like, you know, were you, are you conspiring against me? Did you, you know, did you basically, did you snitch on me? And, you know, of course she lied and was like, what are you talking about? I didn't call. I wasn't the one she said, but he clearly threatened her and told her, you know, well, if I find out it's the, that, he told her, he said, well, if I found out you were the one that called and you, you know, basically told on me, you'll never work for, not only will you never work for Nickelodeon, but you'll never work for a Viacom um, company ever again. Um, and they said that after that, his he really changed, his tone changed. He wasn't as playful, as jovial, like, like he really stopped being, you know, whatever. So after the first season, the one, the first woman, um, she was fired. They said that she took too much personal time, which come to find out in his mind, personal time was weekends, which really was her personal time. But there were times when she wasn't available on the weekends. I think um, they said one time she went to a concert and one time she had friends in town that she was spending time with. And basically he was like, well, you know, you took too much of your personal time your personal time not that you called off work not that you took vacation it was your weekend to begin with you took too much of your personal time okay um and then so that left the one writer and she said that at the she said first at the beginning of season two he was like well we're only going to give you we're going to give you Whatever the whatever the contract was, the contract was only for. I don't. The the contract was only for let's say, eleven weeks. But he wanted her to work twenty weeks or something crazy like that. And again, basically, she was in a position of a piece of a job or zero job. So she was like, it pissed her off. She was really upset by this contract, but she, you know, but she agreed to come back. It was sixteen weeks. Okay, thank you, Boo. Um, but either way, what it, what it came down to was him paying 
her having to work for 11 weeks for free, basically. And, um, but she said like the, she said with, um, within the first couple of days they were talking, it was, she's the only woman in the writer's room now and it's her and these guys and they were talking and come to find out Dan said something to her like, you used to be a sex worker, right? A, a phone sex worker, right? You used to do phone sex, right? And she was like, what are you talking about? What do you, I never know. I've never done that. He was like, oh, yeah, you did. You told us that before. Didn't you tell us that last year that, you know, you used to do phone sex? And she was like, I ain't never say that. Like, I never did phone sex. What are you talking about? And she said he really kind of got irritated by it that she wouldn't, I guess, either go along with it or whatever. And she said she quit that day. And she realized that she was like, there's no way I could work in this writer's room as the only woman, you know, like I won't, I won't survive. So she quit. Um, the other thing too, was when they hired a new writer to replace the woman that, that they, they fired, um, they hired a white man, um, started him off with the same salary and he had no writing credit, the same salary that he wanted her to split with the other lady the year before. Right. So Right. I mean, it was not appropriate in any way, shape, or form. Um, so she ended up suing. She sued Nickelodeon. Um, and again, you guys, this was in the early 90s. This was before, you know, the internet and the social media and the TMZs of the world. So when people filed lawsuits like that, I mean, it probably made the front page of you know, like the Hollywood Reporter or something like that. But it's not something that was a big deal that stayed in the headlines. So she sued Nickelodeon for, you know, for discrimination and a hostile work environment and, you know, all of the things, you know, harassment and stuff like that. She did get a settlement, she said, but it really cost her her career, um, which she said, I knew going in, I, you know, I kind of knew that I was putting my career in jeopardy. Hey, Raven, hey, boo. She said, I knew, I kind of knew I was putting my career in jeopardy by pursuing this. However, in my mind, I was like, if I could stop somebody else from going through that, then it was worth it. She said, but now I've realized that I ain't stopped nothing. Like people continue to deal with the abusive work relationship and worse. So it was all for nothing. So she was basically was like, I threw my career away for nothing. Now, it sounds like she got a pretty nice settlement, though, because she said, you know, I had to make sure that the settlement was worth me losing my career. Now, I don't think she's totally, totally, totally out of Hollywood. I just think it was a lot slower of a climb than it would have been. Okay. Okay. So then we start learning about Brandy. Brandy was a young star on the show. Her Brandy was not interviewed. Her mother spoke, um, which I think that that right there, I think, said a lot that Brandy was like, yeah, I don't want no parts of this. Um, Brandy wanted to get into, you know, Brandy wanted to get into Hollywood. You know, she wanted to be on TV. And of course, back then, Nickelodeon was, the, was, it was either Nickelodeon or Disney. Like they said, they were like, you know, for children's television, you had Nickelodeon, you had Disney, right? Um, oh, um, so Brandy's mom, it's interesting because Brandy's mom was like, I always wanted to be an actress. You know, I always wanted to get into that, but my mom was, um, she worked for, Holly, she worked in Hollywood. She worked for lawyers in Hollywood at the studios. And she said she knew what really went on at the studios and she never let me anywhere near it. And in my mind, I was thinking you should have followed your mother's lead, but I'm not blaming her. I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying your mama tried to warn you, girl. So she said, you know, that her daughter wanted to get into acting and television. And so she, she, you know, she did it. You know, she took her on auditions and stuff like that. So she got on Nickelodeon. Um, I think she was on all that or on the Amanda Bynes show or something. I think she was on all that. She started off on the Amanda Bynes show like as an extra. Um, but what they said was that parents were not allowed on the set. 
So when you took your child to the, um, you know, you dropped your child off, there was a production assistant that would meet you, you know, at the parking lot or at the gate or whatever, and then walk the kid into the studio, yada, yada, yada. Well, the guy that did that was a guy by the name of Jason. And when she stopped working there, it was only, she, I don't think she worked there long, but when she stopped working there, you know, Jason was getting all the kids' emails, you know, because again, back then, everybody didn't have cell phones and stuff. So he was getting all the kids' emails and stuff to keep in touch. You know, he said, listen, I work at, you know, I work for other, you know, for other um, shows as well. You know, I keep you guys in mind, blah, blah, blah. So the mom said when he sent the first email, she saw it, she read it, didn't think it was anything inappropriate. You know, it was just a, hey, you know, keep working hard, keep doing what you're doing, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, she said that the daughter, you know, kept emailing with him and, um, and she said one day her daughter was on the computer and she just slammed the computer shut, ran in her room. Um, and she said, girl, what, you know, she said, Brandy, what, Brandy, what, what, what happened? What, what, what's going on? Why are you upset? And baby, that boy, Jason, then sent Brandy a picture of him pleasuring himself. He was and he was pleasuring himself. And he said, I just want you to know that I'm thinking about you. Now, according to the mother, she said they never communicated again, but she didn't go to the authorities because she didn't want them to judge her because she allowed her child to communicate with this man, you know? And so she said, you know, I just, I didn't. And again, I, it was hard in that moment for me not to kind of get mad at that woman because I was like, had you gone to the police? you may have saved other girls from being victimized. But again, I'm trying to understand, you know, she said, I just didn't want, because, you know, she said, I carried a lot of guilt that I allowed my child to have this, comp you know, to, to, because I was thinking, I mean, as soon as she said it in my mind, I was like, he don't have no reason to communicate with your child. He should have been communicated with you. Like, why was he communicating? And again, I'm trying not to judge nobody. But in my mind, I was like, I would, why, why did you think it was okay for this grown ass man to talk to your 14 year old child? I, and in my mind, y'all, you know, I'm talking to the tribe. It's, we real around here. We, real, can I be real with y'all? Can I be real with y'all right now? What I was thinking when I was listening to this, this mother tell her story, can we be real? It's 174 y'all in this chat. If y'all could please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. My main channel is members only, but you do not have to be a member in order to chat. Just go over to the Really Be TV Reviews channel and you can chat freely and say whatever it is that you would like to say, honey. Join the conversation, okay? It, the, the channel is linked at the top of the chat. Can I be real with y'all for a minute though? Number one, I think it's more to the story. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute, why I think it's more to that story. I'm not sure that that's the first and only time. But that's my opinion. That's my opinion. That's really be talking, okay? Number two. In my mind, I felt like you allowed your child to communicate with that man. And when I say man, he was over 18, so he was a man. You allowed your child to communicate with that man because you thought that man was a gateway into your child 
becoming a star. That's how I felt. And that's with no judgment. That is with no judgment because parents do it all the time. We had this conversation with the whole R. Kelly thing. That is with no, I shouldn't say no judgment. I guess it's a little bit of judgment, but that is how I feel. That's my opinion. I feel like it's more to the story that we're not getting. And I think that she, because let's be clear. If your daughter had come home and said, mom, the, the school janitor wants my email address. He just wants, let's say your daughter was changing schools and the janitor wanted her email address so that they could keep in touch. Would you have been cool with that? Or would you have been like, why the hell does the janitor want to talk to my child? This man was a production assistant. Literally his job was escorting the kids from the front gate to the studio. Like he was, he was an assistant. Like he was, what could he do for you or your child? But I I feel like that had a lot to do with it. And I'm and I'm I'm trying not to I'm trying not to judge, but I have to feel that way. I have to feel like you would not have responded the same way had this man been the secretary at the school or the janitor or a teacher's assistant. Like I don't feel like that would have been the same response. But anyway, moving on. And I'm again when we get to there's more to the story. When we get there. I'll tell you why I think it's more to the story. We won't get there. Okay, so. Brandy, okay. Thank you, Kenya. As a mother, I am my daughter's advocate. It also teaches her to advocate for herself. Thank you for the super chat, my love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Amanda was the star. They showed how Amanda Bynes became the star. It showed her progression from when she first came on the show to when she was like 16 years old and how she wanted to transition from child star, which we all know is a hard, hard transition. But she got on a show called What I Like About You. I believe it was on the CW. And Dan was a co-creator. He went with her. He left Nickelodeon. He went with her because, of course, he wanted to get out of children's shows and he wanted to get into other projects and more adult projects. And Amanda was sort of his ticket. They said that he was so difficult on the set that eventually he got banished from the set. Now he claimed that that wasn't the truth, but this is the this is what they said in the documentary. Um, they said also around this time, Amanda was not getting along with her parents. Amanda was dating a guy that her parents didn't like, and even though Amanda was a, was a star and making a lot of money and getting a lot of notoriety, she was still sixteen years old, and the parents were like, "Hail to the na to the na na na." So Amanda ran away from home and Dan actually helped her. They didn't get into the details of what, of how Dan helped her. I don't know if he gave her money. I don't know if he gave her a place to stay. I don't know what he did. Maybe he rented a hotel room in his name. I don't know all of the details, but they said that he helped her run away. And then she tried to get emancipated, um, which a lot of child stars have done. They've gotten emancipated from their parents and he helped her in that process. Well, the emancipation failed. It did not work. She, the, 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 the court did not grant her emancipation. And they said, essentially, that was the end of the relationship between Dan and Amanda because the parents were really pissed off that he sort of helped. He was helping her or helped her try to um, get away from them and, and get emancipated. And at that point, he pretty much was done at All About You. His name... He sort of was like Mariah Huck. His name was still there in the credits. He was still, but it was only in title only. And that's when he went back to Nickelodeon and he rebooted um, all that. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, Jay, um, there's an article. Dan, Dan did a clip. Somebody sent me the clip. From TMZ, he did an interview with TMZ. He also um, there's an article in the Hollywood Reporter. We're gonna go over that article after we review part two. We're gonna talk about what he, his response. So they said when Dan came back, uh, Xavier, send me the. Can you screenshot the tweets to me, please? You said Dan is on Twitter apologizing. Can you screenshot the tweets to me, please? So, um. And I will, I'll play y'all a little clip of what he said to TMZ. But 
They said when Dan came back to Nickelodeon, he was more powerful and he was more abusive. Um, there was still was very much a gender bias. There was very there was racial tension as well. Um, we meet Brian. Brian was on um, all of that, I believe, for two seasons. And um, his mother was very vocal. His mother did speak up. And ultimately, he was fired. And he felt like it was his mother's fault. And he blamed his mother for a long time for basically, you know. And his mother was like, you know, that hurt their relationship a lot. You know, that that very much hurt their relationship, she said. But in hindsight, her son getting fired was probably a good thing because being on that set was very toxic. And then, of course, what they found out was happening later on. She said, you know, it probably was a good thing that thank you. Uh, thank you, Xavier. It was probably a good thing that he was um, taken away. Right. I mean, that he was taken out of that situation. In 2003, the production assistant, Jason Handy. He was arrested. That's the same guy that was dealing with uh, the young the young lady, Brandy. When um, they when they went into his house with the search warrant, they found all sorts of child. You know what? They found pictures. They found videos. Um, and what they also found was they found that he had kept a token from all of the young girls. They didn't say that to all of them he actually did anything with, but that he came into contact with. And they found a, a plastic, and they kept he kept everything in a Ziploc bag with the name on the bag. They found a bag with Brandy's name on it, and that's what made them reach out to Brandy and her mom. Here's the reason why I said I think it's more to the story. Because Brandy's mother said that they found a Ziploc bag with letters from Brandy. Mama, you said they was emailing. When they start writing letters, and what did the letters say? And they said, when you, I, when you listen to the amount of evidence they had against this man, he even wrote they found letters or whatever where he wrote that he he knew he was a pedo. He said, I am. I am a pedo. I am a child. I am a, you know, I ain't gonna say the word. Y'all know. The way they made it sound, now y'all walk with me on this one. The way they made it sound, and I hate to say it like this, but they, they made it sound like this guy had a lot of victims on various levels. And when I say victim, I don't mean that all of it, all of it escalated to actual touching or, you know, a violation. But it sounds like there were a lot of tokens. I found it interesting that Brandy did actually end up testifying. And he was convicted. He went to jail for six years. He was convicted. And one of his counts was specifically against Brandy. Now, I don't have the energy to go back and try to pull the court case and read the document and transcripts, but I find it interesting that this man had all of these Ziploc bags with all of these names and all of these tokens, but Brandy, he was specifically convicted on what he did to Brandy but according to mama, all he did to Brandy was send her a picture, an inappropriate pic. I don't mean to say only. That ain't what I'm saying. Y'all know what I mean when I say that. Well, y'all keep saying only six years, only six years. I don't know what he was actually convicted of. I don't know what he was actually convicted of. But it sounds to me like there was more to that story. And I'm not, listen, I'm not saying mama got to tell us. Okay, you tell us what you're comfortable with. Remember, I told y'all, Brandy didn't say nothing. So we don't know. Brandy didn't say nothing. Brandy was not interviewed. Um, Brandy did not tell her story. And I, again, I have not looked for Brandy, okay? Mama said Brandy left the entertainment industry and that is it and that is all. She is gone. That's what mama said. Okay. 
So while all of this was going on, come to find out there was another guy on the set by the name of Ryan Peck, who was also known as the Pickle Boy. They should have known something was wrong with Ryan Peck because Ryan Peck actually had a, they said that he had a self-portrait of John Wayne Gacy. Now, if y'all don't know who John Wayne Gacy is, just go, just go Google it because I I can't get into it. I can't do it. Y'all go Google it. If y'all don't know who that man is. And they said that he also became pen pals with John Wayne Gacy while he was in jail. We should have known something was wrong with him. So he worked on the set. They say he worked on multiple sets. He worked on the Kill and Kale. The was it Kale show? What's his name? What's the other boy name? It's Kale and Keenan. Keenan and Kale show, all of that. He worked on a lot of Nickelodeon shows, right? And one day, the, the 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 kids said, "Well, they're adults now, but the kids who were on the show that were interviewed said, one day, all of them were called into the room. And they thought they they thought it was a table read, but it felt different. They said it didn't feel like a regular table read. They asked the parents. They didn't allow the parents in this particular meeting, and the kids sat down with attorneys from Nickelodeon, where they were asked." They basically were like, listen, Ryan, you know, is in trouble for doing some, you know, pretty bad things. And we just want to know if Ryan ever did any bad things with any of you guys. And of course they said, yeah, John Wayne Gacy, the clown. Mm -hmm." And they said they kind of looked around at each other like, was it you? Was it you? Was it you? Was it you? Who was it? Was it who? And none of the kids said it happened to them, right? But he was arrested, and one of his charges was that he, you know, violated some, uh, because he used to also do, like, um, acting. He used to do um, coach act, do acting classes. They said that he violated one of the kids that he worked with that was that he um that took classes with him that he you know worked with um with the coaching so they knew it was somebody from nickelodeon they just didn't know who it was but the fact that they called them kids into a room without their parents to ask them the question was a little you know sus as um my girl said on the show a little sus and that's where the first half ends we see um what's his name y'all cody what's the baby's name zach what's the baby's name i don't know him because i told you i don't know none of these nickelodeon people what's the baby's name because the episode the first it's the first two episodes it just ends with him coming in to sit down and talk and so they don't say his name you just see his face drake bell thank you because i don't know the baby and i don't want i'm not trying to be disrespectful so we see drake come in and sit down now from my understanding drake was on all of that and the, was he he was on all of that and the Amanda Bynes show what else was he on on Nickelodeon y'all Drake and Josh okay thank you so the second half I'm sure um gets into his story and it gets specific into his experience you know, the first thing, again, y'all, I'm on the outskirts of this stuff because, again, these aren't my people. I didn't grow up with these people. So a lot of these stories I heard from the outside, but it didn't connect to my childhood like, you know, like other things would because it wasn't my experience. Like I said, I never watched any of these shows. I don't know these people. Only people I know, you know, of course, I, I know Ariana Grande because she became such a star and that kind of thing. But I don't know all of these, these shows. So. But the first thing I thought of was, is this what happened to Amanda? And I don't mean that in a mean way. I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. But now I look at all of the problems that Amanda Bynes has had, the mental health issues, the uh, the issues with her parents, you know. Um, and I think, what happened to that baby? 
I mean, because I do think that, I do think that, you know, some of us, we, mental health is something we're born with, you know, I do believe that, but other people, I believe it comes from trauma. And I'm just wondering, and I haven't done the research, you know what I'm saying? I haven't done the research. I, I know that Amanda is under conservatorship. I know Amanda has had mental health issues and I believe drug issues as well. So I don't know all of the details. I do not know all of the details. And now I now I want to go back and, and pull the old articles and um and, and really do the research. I, I want to now I really do want to go learn more about what's been going on with Amanda Bynes over the last you know 10 years or so. But right, Amanda has not accused him of anything. I'm just looking, I'm on what letter, what letter, Xavier. I'm just on the outside looking in like, baby, is like, did your experiences, and maybe not even Dan, maybe it could be just like these other guys were on the set. Did you have some other experiences down to the Nickelodeon? You know? Amanda has a similar story to Drake's. If you ask me, Dan absolutely was doing the same thing to her. Didn't Josh from Drake and Josh get in trouble for something see now i need to go down the rabbit hole and look up all these daggone nickelodeon kids there was an old tumblr letter that didn't make sense mm. i had the same thought about amanda because when it happened in real time it felt like it came out of the clear blue sky right because amanda was like america's sweetheart and she was on top of the world and she looked, she was a cutie. I remember who she was, but again, I remember um the TV show, What I Like About You. I think I might have watched a few episodes here, there. Drake is on the registry. Oh, that's not good. Keenan ain't, to my knowledge, Keenan ain't said nothing. Kale hasn't said anything, to my knowledge, to my knowledge. He went missing once and was found by the school. Oh, Lord. Drake got in trouble for texting a teenage girl, but was later found innocent because the girl lied about her age. Oh, okay, okay. Hmm. Well, now it makes me want to It makes me want to crawl down the rabbit hole. Now I'm telling y'all the truth. It makes me want to. Now I really need to go because the, the like I said, I've been following the Amanda Bond situation, but from the outside. Like again, I'm not. It's not like Britney Spears because I remember when Britney, like you know, again, I remember when Britney Spears, you know, went down the rabbit hole. Let me see. Let me see what Xavier sent me. Yeah, I saw this. Is this the the clip from his TMZ interview? We're going to do a whole Dan Snyder situation um, because I want to want to do part two. And like I said, there was an article in the Hollywood Reporter. Y'all know how we do. We're going to read through the article and we're going to go through the article. But I want to finish everything first before we get into Dan, because I want to be able to speak about the documentary in, in its entirety. Um, Bossy Don Diva says she is definitely on her way down the rabbit hole. Baby, I feel like I'm tumbling. I feel like I'm tumbling. People are calling on Keenan and Kel to say something because they have questions. Listen, here's what I'm going to say. To me, speaking on your trauma, if there is trauma, I'm not assuming there's any trauma with Keenan and Kel. Let me, let me be very clear. But if there is trauma, speaking on your trauma, that's a very personal thing. And I don't think Although I understand that this documentary has started something and it's a firestorm and everybody wants to know everything and everybody wants to, you know, you know, but I think we have to be, we have to be respectful of people and their experiences. And maybe they didn't have the same experience. I mean, they did say that there was some racial tension and stuff. Maybe these predators didn't want the little black boys. And I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm being real. Maybe, maybe Keenan and Kel didn't, get approached maybe they didn't go through anything like that i'm not saying they did or they didn't but just like there were other people on that show that didn't know that what was happening to drake you know what i mean um i do know that kale went through some things um 
publicly, you know, publicly went through some things. So I don't know, you guys. Again, I, I'm one of those people. I'm like, everybody's story is their story. Hold on. This is—is is this the letter you were talking about? Um. Okay, so this is the letter that Amanda Bynes wrote. Where? So I'm gonna read you guys this letter. March the 27th of 2018. Last night after the news broke about a certain producer and actress, all of you know who knows the producer as well as anyone sent me this. Okay, let me see that again because I'm a little I'm a little confused. Okay, let me read that again. Last night after the news broke about a certain producer and actress that all of I think should have, let's say that all of you know who knows the producer as well as anyone sent me to I'm com I'm going to just read it because I'm already lost. Thank you for all of your ongoing support. I don't know how any of these men sleep at night. But if there's one thing that I do know is that what's done in the dark always comes to light. And then it goes on to say, sorry, I thought it was clever. Un I think she's supposed, I think it's supposed to be unfortunately... I will obviously not be making any comment whatsoever for obvious reasons. And unfortunately, I feel as though the only way that legitimate stories can make the headlines regarding blank, and she literally wrote blank, blank. Reg okay, I'm going to go back to that then. Hold on, let me go back to that then. And, um, let me go back to that. I'm gonna Let me finish reading it. I see it now, Xavier. I didn't see it at first. Hold on, Xavier. Okay, y'all hold on a second. I mean, I'm going to... Y'all know my brain stops moving fast. I'm going to read this again, but I'm going to I'm going to post this so we can see what Xavier is talking about. But let me finish reading it. It says, "Sorry, I thought can um Xavier, do you have my email? Matter of fact, never mind. Let me email it to myself real quick. I'm gonna email it so I can put it up on the screen. Hold on, child. Do y'all know my Twitter got hacked by some uh by African guy uh in Ghana." Child, I had to reset everything, child. Okay, I'm going to finish reading it, but we're going to look at what Xavier is talking about because I, now I see it, Xavier, I see it. But let me finish reading it. It says, sorry, I thought it was clever. Unfortunately, I will obviously not be making any comment whatsoever for obvious reasons. And unfortunately, I feel as though the only way that legitimate stories can make the headlines regarding... And there's literally a blank line there is if others publicly speak on his behavior. Blank was truly like a second father to me, but things changed after the second incident. I don't know if I will ever be able to have children or have the family of my dreams. People have been picking this scab for years. I just won't be the one who finally rips it off. Oh, y'all, we gonna do a we gotta do a video on Amanda Bynes. Hold on, y'all. Let me show y'all what um what what Xavier sent. Hold on, y'all. Let's look at it. We're gonna look at it together. I didn't Xavier, I did not even see that. Man. Oh my gosh, Xavier, I did not see that. But now I see it, it is, yeah. Okay, let's look at this together, family. Try. Bap said, is it a verified letter? Okay, Amanda has never acknowledged this letter or confirmed it, but it was submitted when she was active on Tumblr. Okay, so we don't know if this really is her. So let me let me put my, my, my this is all alleged. I do not know if this was really a letter that Amanda Bynes wrote. So this is all alleged, but listen, we in the rap, we, we done tumbled into the rabbit hole, so let's keep going. We done tumbled into it, so might as well keep going, okay? Okay. All right, we done tumbled into the rabbit hole. Let's look at what Xavier is talking about, okay? So here is, it's a blonde item, but it allegedly is signed by Amanda Bynes. 
Um, at the oh, it cuts off at the end, but if you can see the bottom, it says Amanda Vines at the bottom. So you see here it says blind item, March 27th of 2018. Last night, after all the news broke about a certain producer and actress. So what happens with Dan Snyder in 2018? Somebody Google that for me, please. If if let's just, if if this is Dan, let's see if something happened with Dan in 2018 with Dan and another actress. If you look at this right here, you see how everything is in lowercase. So it says, thank you all for your ongoing support. I, you see the D is capital. I don't know how A is capital. Any of these men is capital sleep at night. But if there's one thing that I do know is that what's done in the dark always comes to light. So D-A-N is in capital letters. And then right here, she wrote, sorry, I thought it was clever. And that's a smiley face emoji. And that's supposed to be, unfortunately, y'all know they people make up their own words. Unfortunately, I will obviously not be making any comment whatsoever for obvious reasons. And unfortunately, I feel as though the only way that legitimate stories can make the headlines regarding blank is if others publicly speak on his behavior. Blank was truly like a second father to me, but things changed after the second incident. I don't know if it will ever be able to have children or have the family of my dreams. People have been picking the scab for years. I just won't be the one who finally rips it off. And you can't see it. It cuts it off, but down there. Hold on, let me turn off my banner. Hold on, let me turn off my banner so you can see that. See where it says Amanda Bynes at the bottom right there. Now, again, we don't know if this is really written by Amanda Bynes. We don't know, okay? We do not know that to be a fact. But what happened in 2018 with Dan, y'all? I think in 2018, Nickelodeon separated from Dan. Janelle I. Carly wrote a book called I'm Glad My Mother's Dead and mentioned how Dan was abusive on set. Is that the girl that wrote the book last year that everybody was talking about when is she was talking about, I'm glad my mother's dead? Is that the same one y'all talking about? Um, you know his wife is the cooking lady who was talking to Patty like a child with the cupcake paper. Oh. Oh. Y'all, yeah, this too merge. This is too merge. Oh. This is too merge. Yeah, we got to do a whole nother show. Oh, my God. Tracy, what, this, what you sending me, girl? Oh, that's the same clip. Everybody just sent me this. I just seen this clip 20 times. But thank you, boo. Thank you. Y'all. Y'all. Okay. Try. Huddle up. Let's huddle up, tribe. Let's huddle up. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <sighs> Deadline Hollywood, the first to report about Nickelodeon parting ways with Schneider in March 2018, also reported there were complaints about Schneider's behavior. Listen.
All right, tribe. This is what we're going to do. Okay. This is what we're going to do, tribe. What time is this thing supposed to start, Scotty? What time is this supposed to... Oh, at 8.15. Okay. We about to hop off of here because we got to head on over to Scotty's house, okay? We're going to head on over to Scotty's house. We're going to kiki and cuckoo about these uh, Real Housewives of Potomac looks, okay? We about to do that. I think I think we all need that palate cleanse after this. After this, I think we all need to laugh, Okay. I think we all need to be silly for a few minutes. So I want all of y'all to meet me over at Scotty's house. Put the link in the chat for my, one of my moms. If y'all could please drop that Scotty's link in the chat. We're going to be over there in 10 minutes, okay? We're going to be over at Scotty's house in 10 minutes. Yeah, y'all know sometimes we're a little late, but we're going to be there in 10 minutes, okay? Now, here's the plan, though, tribe. We're going to watch part two, okay? I'm going to try to watch the rest of part two tonight. And we're going to review it maybe tomorrow. You know, I'm doing the teacher project, and then I'm going to be doing the podcast after that. So it might be too late for me to do it tomorrow. But if we don't do it tomorrow, we'll do it on Thursday, okay? We are going to finish it either tomorrow night or Thursday, okay? And then we're going to do a third live where we're going to talk about Dan. We're going to go over that article that I told y'all about, the Hollywood Reporter article. I'm going to pull this article that you just gave me the information to um, on when they parted ways with him in 2018. And I got to do a deep dive into Amanda, okay? I need to get more details on this Amanda situation. We're going to do a whole live on that. Now, so that means we're going to do part two, and then we're going to do the Dan and Amanda situation. That'll probably be over the weekend. That will probably be over the weekend, okay? Y'all, we got a lot. My brain is on fire right now, okay? My brain is on fire right now. And and I still got Russell Simmons stuff for y'all. Listen, I got so much content. I just ain't got the time, okay? But we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. Next week is spring break. So if nothing else, baby, y'all going to get sick of me. Because I'm going to be home all day long. You're going to get sick of me. So let's let's head over to Scotty's, y'all. Let's go over there and laugh a little bit. We need a we need a pilot cleanse. Pour you a drink. Y'all didn't tell me I should have poured me a drink. Y'all didn't tell me I should have poured me a drink. And we got to get the swans in, Jay. We going to get it. I promise y'all we going to get it. I promise y'all we going to get it. But next week, I'm on spring break. I got time. Okay? I got time. We're going to get caught up on everything. Everything. We're going to get caught up. I got time. I need something stronger than this. Y'all, see y'all in fit. Shit, 10 minutes, okay? Love you. Peace. Hit that like button on your way out the door. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And you know, I don't never, I don't, I don't, requirements are not, money is not required, but it is appreciated. Talk to y'all later. Peace.